Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, before we get into it, we do have a question and answer session for technical trading uh, at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time for the Platinum members today uh, that's coming. Just a reminder to all the Platinum members. <clears throat> so we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities. I'll give you my financial opinion. We're gonna start with the dollar, work our way through yields, precious metals, and then uh, the commodities that I follow. So let's dive right in. I'll give you my opinion. Uh, we've got the DXY, that is the dollar index. <clears throat> and we're getting some selling pressure today. Now we haven't really broken out to the downside yet. Uh, we, we have this falling wedge pattern. We've broken to the upside. Usually this goes higher. Oop. Usually this goes to the upside. <clears throat> But we are actually breaking to the downside potentially. Now we're still we still have some support here. I wouldn't say it's broken down yet, but we are getting a little bit of selling pressure, down 0.51 percent. Uh, and, and remember, in the short term, anything can happen. Um, it could be anything. Uh, all all things are possible in the short term. In the long term, what you're measuring is the relative strength against each other in the long term. So. Again, long term, um, to me, it looks like we are heading lower in the dollar in the short to medium term with this pullback. And even if we were to pull back up, it would just be a retest type movement. So I am viewing this where um, the monetary conditions of the dollar are going to be looser than the monetary conditions of other currencies that it's measured against in the short to medium term here, where we could see the dollar continue lower. We've got TNX, uh, which is the 10 year yield. And remember, we're talking yields here, not prices, but yields or interest rates. Yields and interest rates are the same thing. Uh, and we're down a little bit today, down 1.4%. So, but we're in an uptrend uh, in the short term. And that uptrend does not have a reversal pattern uh, or anything like that. We're still in an uptrend, it's just a down day for yields. Uh, TLT bond price is going up. Again, that's not a reversal. Uh, so I still think that the overall trend is lower. And then looking at the 30 year yields, uh, it's slightly lower today, down 1.3%. That is not a reversal candlestick or anything like that. So I think the trend is still intact for a move higher in the 30 year yields. Now, if you kind of add this up, we have a lower dollar, lower yields. Uh, that's usually beneficial for um, precious metals. Uh, so it's a tailwind of precious metals. And then the, the curve, the TYX divided by TNX, um, it's basically flat. Uh, so it didn't uninvert or anything like that. It's just staying the same. So the whole curve dropped down uh, to some extent, and it remained relatively stable on that drop. The CRB index uh, slightly lower today, down 0.5%. Uh, this still looks very good for a move higher at this time. We have a falling wedge. We've broken out of the falling wedge, and we're doing a little bit of a retest move either back to this support line or this support line. I don't know which one it's going to pull back to, but this is highly correlated with oil. Oil is a large portion of the CRB index here, and oil is kind of the, the number one commodity. So what, this, what the CRB index will do is follow whatever oil does, for the most part. CRB to S&P 500, we pulled back a little bit, not a reversal candlestick. Um, the S&P 500 did very well today. We had lower yields, lower dollar, and that's generally good for stocks. Um, it's also generally good for commodities as well. So, But overall, the commodity index uh, underperformed the S&P 500 today. Looking at gold, gold's up 10.8%. Uh, we do have a little bit of a squeezing here. If I were to draw this in, uh, you can see this kind of squeezing up a little bit there. And we're squeezing up a little bit here, uh, a little bit. Now, that is a rising wedge to some extent. <clears throat> and we could be, uh, we could see a turning point at some point and break lower. But we could also melt out the top of this thing and really run. Uh, we have seen that. Now, if I take a little bit bigger picture view, because this is on a short term, I take a little bit bigger picture view, we've broken out of this pattern here to the upside. 
there's logarithmic, there's non-logarithmic. And we very well could come back here and do a retest move. We could break out of this. You know, I don't I don't play the short term because the short term, anything can drive price in the short term. Anything. There could it could be weather related. It could be something happens, uh, an earthquake or whatever it is. Um, it could be anything. It could be some news that that spills out and it moves it for one or two days. But overall, the structural thing of this is higher. Uh, whether it comes back and does a retest move or it just breaks up, uh, I think that gold's going higher uh, given what these this pattern looks like. Looking at silver, silver surprisingly uh, was up today. We're up 1.52%. Now, you know, which way is this thing going to go? We've got nice, good buying pressure here, smaller selling pressure, and then we've got another bearish engulfing there. Difficult to say which direction this is necessarily going to go in the short term. We very well could pull back here to do a retest move. And, and again, that's why I don't play the short term movements. Uh, what I do is I back out, I look at this, and we've got massive support down here. This is an excellent buying opportunity. Uh, and on the website, we got a lot of really good mining companies right at the tip there before the breakout. I got lots of physical metal at 1815. That's what you want to look for. Now we're moving on higher. We're moving on up. So looking at the shorter term movements, um, I am biased for a move higher, but I am open for a short short term little pullback um, in the short, short term. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily going to happen. Uh, this very well could break out of here at, at, at any time if it wants to break. So <clears throat> I remain bullish. And in the short term, just remember, it could be quite volatile. My boy, platinum. What the <clears throat> exactly? 5.44%. Now, I've been buying this thing for a little while. Nice consolidation pattern here. Uh, I've been a buyer in that box right through there. That's where I've been accumulating like heck. Uh, and now I'm letting it ride, letting this bad boy ride. And today we have a nice little breakout here. Good, solid um, movement here. And we're breaking to the upside of this little consolidation pattern. We have some resistance ahead of us. I mean, we've got a lot of resistance right where we're at. So if I were to put a pattern or, a, or draw something here, we've got resistance right there and we're starting to poke through that guys we're starting to poke through that resistance so we could see a big run a big run could be ahead of us now I, why do i always say could and, and why does it always seem wishy-washy because we don't know the future i don't know the future 100 but i can tell you platinum's cheap we're running down inventories we've got a breakout above a critical resistance level which is about 1040 1050 uh, we're sitting at 1060 you might see a little bloody nose tomorrow, which is a small down profit taking day tomorrow. Um, wouldn't be afraid of it. I think I think we could easily see a, a, a move much higher than where we are today. Uh, XAU to gold ratio, right at that resistance level. We're just sitting at that resistance level. Uh, there's that resistance level going across here. We got to break through that. Platinum broke through it. I don't see why this wouldn't break through it with time. Then we got to break through that big downtrend line for happiness. I call that the uh, need to break this line for happiness where we could really get a big run out of the gold and silver mining companies. Uh, looking at GDX, again, we're at that resistance line. We're just playing around with it. Uh, we're up 0.5%, but we're right at that resistance support level. We're right underneath it. SILJ just moving sideways. Again, we're right underneath that resistance level going across, very similar to GDX. Lots of resistance there. <clears throat> now, crude oil. Crude oil, um, basically, we're coming up to this resistance line. We're, we're, we're just underneath it. And I think it still is strong. So it's trying to sell off, but it doesn't. Buyers keep coming in and buying this thing back up. Uh, so I do think when the SPR releases end, we're going to eat through inventories like mad, and this thing's going to go higher over time. How, how quickly will that happen? Uh, we've got other concerns in the market uh, with recession that people think demand's going to be destroyed. And demand destruction in oil is very difficult. We've only seen it a couple times in history. One where they completely do COVID lockdowns. 
And remember, China is coming out of that. They're going to they're going to eat through so much more oil than what they were a month ago that <clears throat> demand for oil is going to go much, much higher from that portion of the world. I think oil is going to come online less from Russia as the Western energy service companies have left. And then I also think that demand will remain robust everywhere else. So I think we're going to get into a squeeze in crude oil at some point here uh, over the next year. Whether it's the first half, whether it's the second half, I don't know the exact timing of it. All we're going to do is watch inventory levels and watch those inventory levels get eaten up. Natural gas, I think it's bottoming here, I think quite soon. We're right at that support level. We, we dipped and touched it. That's why there's a wick at the bottom and buyers came and bought it back up a little bit. What I think is going to happen is we're going to come back and we're going to do a couple of sideways movements, probably two humps. My humps, my humps, my humps, two humps. And then I think we're going to, I think we're going to rip it. Uh, we are in uh, what's considered a, a Livermore cylinder. And what I did is I took the bottom of this, grabbed it here, and we're just touching that support level. And we've got two support levels, the Livermore cylinder support level, and then the big long-term support level going across at the top. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then usually what you get is a, is a couple of like sideways motions, and then you go. It'll be a big old run. I don't know how long those sideways motions are going to last. Uh, maybe it'll be next winter that we take off and really run. It could be next summer uh, or this summer, I mean, coming up. I don't know yet. I don't have, I don't have the crystal ball, <laughs> but the pattern's there. It's lining it up and people are accumulating natural gas. Uh, XOP, yeah, you know me. Notice that it's up 2.15%. People are positioning in XOP. This is a bullish piercing pattern. Uh, what that does is it opened, it gapped lower and it closed higher than the 50th percentile of the candlestick before it. Uh, that is considered a reversal candlestick where we could potentially head higher. Statistical probability uh, of going higher, 60-70% is what I would put it at, 60%. So that's looking good. Uh, OIH also showing good strength. <clears throat> Another, uh, we have a bullish engulfing here, we have a bullish piercing here. And I'll, I'll let you guys know during the training session what those things mean and how to recognize it. But that looks good to go higher as well for OIH. Uh, and again, we've broken out of the longer term pattern here, the downtrend. We're up here, ready to go and launch to, to launch land. Now, that doesn't mean that we won't go down and, re and retest. Um, I don't know if we're gonna go down and retest or if we're just gonna launch. This looks pretty strong to me where we could potentially head higher at any second. And a lot of the companies look really good right now. There's a lot of opportunity here in this sector. A lot. I've been, I've been buying some up. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, again, if we kind of zoom in there, we've got some pretty good buying pressure. It's showing up. Um, we need to have that continue. We're at this resistance level, uh, right kind of where we're at. And that resistance line, we've traded there quite a bit. So it's a little bit of resistance as we come up. Um, again, I want to see us break through this. Uh, the companies themselves look very good. They are squeezing up. Uh, I think we're pretty close to a move in uranium. I think we're, we're T minus less than two months. Or even sooner. It could be at any time. So again, I, I'm not waiting. I am taking positions in anything that looks good. And when I see strength, that's when I add into it. I buy into strength. I don't buy into weakness. But this here does have a bullish engulfing right there. Uh, it's engulfing the day before it. And we'll see if the buyers come in and push it. Looking at URINM, it's also, again, broken out of this downward falling wedge. We're right at that resistance support level. It's back out. That's what this guy is here coming out. We're right at that level. I get off logarithmic. We're right at that support level. We've got a little falling wedge here. This could blow up at any time. At any time now. So I'm, I'm waiting. I'm watching. <clears throat> I'm loaded. I'm loaded to the gills. Now, I know some people think a recession's coming. You know what? We're broken to the upside here. So we'll see if we can go. 
Uh, we do have a little bit of selling pressure still in this thing, though. It's still there. If we see big buying pressure, I'd be a lot more bullish. Uh, tan, <clears throat> Tan's just kind of drifting sideways. I don't see too much buying pressure here. It looked like it was trying to, to break here. You can see all the buying pressure, and then all of a sudden it kind of failed. Again, I don't really have much in Tan. Um, <clears throat> I don't believe in the, the profitability of these companies because they don't. there's no profits there. It's all subsidized. Uh, COPX, this is the copper uh, ETF. Um, we're still moving sideways. Nice little small down day today. A uh, bigger picture view, it's just a bloody nose on a monthly candlestick. And that's usually a continuation pattern higher. So we've got some, some sellers still in there, probably a consolidation pattern or something like that. And then we'll break. But it looks very good from a weekly perspective. Uh, lithium looks like it's try trying to put in something here. Uh, it's not a bullish engulfing or anything. It's not really a reversal candlestick, but it's it's an up day. Uh, REMX also an up day, but no reversal candlestick. So the moment, the trend going lower is still intact for uh, rare earth metals. But we do have some support through here, so we'll see if that support holds. The S&P 500 uh, up today. It's not a reversal candlestick, but there is some buying pressure uh, down in this range there. You can see it with the wick, and we've got a little update today. Uh, and then the NASDAQ also up today, up 2.6%. It's not a reversal candlestick. Um, this here is a reversal candlestick, so this one is strong. Uh, I think the markets thought that Powell was going to relax, and it was ready to break to the upside, but he came out and said, you know, I I'm not going to loosen up here guys so we're continuing to go lower <clears throat> well looking at emerging markets emerging markets is holding up quite well up 1.7 percent broken down trend line looking quite good actually uh, xhb also looking strong 2.44 percent is this kind of that double bottom it kind of looks like it maybe we get a little loop here or something like that um the housing market doesn't look as bad as what I would think it is when looking at this chart. This chart actually looks quite strong. Uh, we've got a breakout, a retest, and then I think we're gonna head higher. Uh, I think it's just waiting for interest rates. Now, people say, oh, I'm, I'm missing something. Well, they're not looking at how people are positioning in the home builders. Why are the people positioning in home builders like they are right here? Why is this a bullish setup? Probably don't have an answer for that. Uh, here's Moo. Moo does look like it's getting a little bit of selling pressure today. It's up 1%, but uh, it's still, this this looks like me. We could have a further pullback. Uh, think of it as a continuation pattern, something like this, where it could potentially fall and go lower for the agribusiness ETF. Uh, copper prices of the future prices still looks really good. I don't see too many sellers over here. Lots of buying pressure in these candlesticks there. So that usually works its way on higher. Uh, so that still looks good. The sellers haven't come in and whomped us yet. Lumber down slightly, but we're at, we're at that resistance line. I think lumber is going to break to the upside here. It's a falling wedge. So I think lumber is actually looking bullish to move to the upside. Uh, iron ore, basically flat, 0.14% uh, moving sideways. Uh, let me go to the weeklies, and we're somewhere like right in there is where it's at. We're right on that cusp of breaking out for iron ore at one one ten right right here. Um, nickel up four point two four percent. This looks good to go higher. This was a double bottom. We had a lead in, double bottom pattern, a breakout, a pause, and then a break. Um, it's exactly what I look for. Uh, aluminum still tracking sideways here. There it is. And I, I think aluminum is going to head higher. <clears throat> Look at the volume. It's coming. <clears throat> Baltic dry index, we've broken to the upside. We're just hanging out right below that resistance line. I, I do think we're going to head higher for the Baltic dry index. China reopening looks good. Um, coal futures, it's just chilling right underneath this resistance line. It's at a very high price, though. So the, the coal companies are they're raking it in. There's the big long term pattern. Uh, this is where you you basically, we see this a lot. It, it breaks out, we come back, this is kind of that retest move, and then you break higher again. 
Um, this is where the the a lot of spots are right now in shipping, in copper, in a whole bunch of different areas. They're right here before the break higher. Uh, Ethereum, uh, it is squeezing up. We're up just a teeny bit, and we're just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. I don't know which way this is going to break. Uh, if I were to take a guess, I actually think it's going to go higher. I know that seems weird. Uh, same with Bitcoin. I've seen this pattern before, and I, I know a lot of people think it's going to go lower. Uh, but what, usually when the majority of people think something's going to go lower, it's usually when it goes on up. But <clears throat> overall, guys, uh, I think oil and energy services look really strong. I know that seems weird, but the companies themselves, the way they're positioning, the way that we're getting some of these patterns, they're looking quite good, especially energy service. Uh, oil itself, yeah, we've got a little bit of a sell-off, but it's actually holding up quite well. Buyers are coming in and putting wicks on the bottom. Momentum's up. Natural gas, putting a little wick at the bottom. I think that's going to take some time. There's a lot of momentum coming down from it. I think we'll get a couple of humps, we'll call it, a couple of bounces off this support level. Then we're going ripping, ripping higher with some time. That might take some time. That might be in um, late spring, early summer time frame. We'll see where that where that goes. I think we've got some some consolidating to do in, in natural gas still. Uh, lots of opportunities are out there. I think uranium's looking really good, and I haven't said that said that in a long time. And I've got my my companies. Uh, we've got the training session coming up. I'll talk about that. We'll we'll chart some of these things out. Uh, you're going to see how to chart some of this stuff. And we'll use it doing it real time. So, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bullish, guys. <laughs> I haven't been this bullish since like 2020. So things are looking a lot better. Now, does that mean that we're going to move immediately? Maybe, maybe not. It might take another year, uh, another couple of months. But things are looking really good. I'm seeing support underneath some of these companies. Um they are not putting in patterns where I think that they're just going to dive bomb to the downside. It looks like they want to go higher. If I, if I saw that, I'd be seeing large selling distribution kind of candlesticks in there. <clears throat> I'm not seeing that. So um, that's what I've got for today. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the finding-value.com website if you want to join a Platinum member. Join our community. Uh, use the word discount in the coupon code. Discount. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.